Today, we're going to be doing some... Oh, gosh, what happened to me? I don't see myself in the video. There's always one problem. There's just, you know, too many moving parts. All right, everybody. So, today... Ah, there we go. Um, what do I have over here? Ah, not going to need that today. So, today we're going to... I actually finally figured out how to get my uh, friend's scale book working again. It is called The Working Zone, and it is a really wonderful scale book. And uh, I kind of blew it up a little bit. We're going to try to experiment with it today. It might not work very... Um, we'll, we'll experiment with how I want to do it. Just real quick, let me change the angle of my camera so I'm not the headless horseman here. And that's nah, too much, but whatever. Now I'm just going to be pressing buttons. Oh, well. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, how's everyone doing? I guess everyone's mics are on mute. Let me unmute everybody here. All right, so um, this workbook I got from my, my friend Nicholas Intermuda. I'm going to totally mispronounce his last name, but he was born in Switzerland, and he actually plays tuba uh, in the Helsinki Symphony, if I'm not mistaken. Um, if not, it's, it's another big orchestra up in Finland. So he put together this book because he knows, every musician knows you need to practice your scales all the time, and it's, it's like the bread and butter of what you need to do to get good, except if you just play your major scales over and over again, that's not really what the point of scales are. The point of scales is to try to get everything to fit together and try to get um, your fingers to move independently from your brain. So his solution for this is to basically include lots of different kinds of scales. So we don't just have you know our major and minor scales, but this book has... I think over 60 different forms of scales in there. So we're going to work on some of those today, starting with the easiest ones, and um, we'll, just, we'll just roll with it. So let me get started first really quickly by... Oh, by the way, the book is available from the finest music retailers, you can imagine. Uh, I'll probably send up a link. Uh, definitely have it up for tomorrow. But you can get it on Apple Books or Google Play Books for like $15 in a digital format. So it's... It's a little cheaper than the paperback version, but paper doesn't crash, <laughs> so sometimes paper is the best way to go. Um, so let's move on. Oh, there we go. Pressing the wrong button there. All right, so he, in the very back of this book, has this uh, little explanation on breathing, and I kind of want to... Um, uh, show it to to everybody. He has a... Uh, generally, the way that people play is, if you're going to play, you're going to go... Do, do, and you hear the little pause before you breathe and the pause after you breathe. And one of his big tenets is that when you're breathing, really focus on do, 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 that the breathing is completely steady and it doesn't change and it starts immediately at the end of your note and and then it keeps on going until you immediately start playing so you don't have any gaps in between the breaths where you hold your breath either at the the end of the phrase or before you play so i just thought i'd just share that with you he has a real good way of explaining it everybody kind of tends to say the same things on that regard but it's equally important so this is what we're going to do i want to pick someone do i have a volunteer who wants to go first on this new stuff I can go. Who said that? Uh, Naomi. Naomi. Okay, good. <laughs> All right, Naomi. Let me uh, mute everybody else, and I will unmute you. All right. And these are going to be really simple uh, flow studies, but this is what we're going to do for everybody. I want you to repeat that first measure three times. So it'll be four measures, and then we'll copy those four measures. So... Um, you know what? Let me go first, and I'll have you uh, copy me. Yeah. And I'm playing tuba today. Oh, may the Lord mm -hmm. have mercy on our souls. All right. All right, here we go. I need I need the practice.
I think your mic cut out. I think I've got several things going on. I'm going to do this, <laughs> and I'm also going to turn myself down. I was just teaching my music appreciate class, and they were complaining that the volume was turned uh, down too much, or turned yeah, turned down too much. So let me turn it down some more. Here we go. It's really blurry for me. I can't see the notes. You can't see the notes. Is there any way you can um, blow up the screen even more? Because this is about as big as I can get. Let me see if I can make it even bigger. Let's see what we got here. Is that better? A little, yeah. <laughs> okay. A little's a little means yes. <laughs> here we go. All right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Breathe when you need to. I'm trying to keep this very sostenuto. Well, not sostenuto. Very, very legato. Very legato. Breathe before you need to breathe. <laughs> Keep it yeah. on going. Yeah. and C flat. And just as a reminder for everyone, keep your embouchure the same as we're changing. We're changing the air, not our mouths. So that was very good. Anyone, hopefully everybody here has got a trigger on their trombone. If not, play the low E flat in just regular third position. It's called a single pedal for those who don't, you know, play euphonium and compensating horns that actually have those notes. So if you do have a trigger, it's trigger third position. Uh, if you play euphonium, one four, but I think the only euphonium player knows very well. <laughs> Alex knows how to play E flats. All right, so here we go. Let's just do one more. So I'm going to try to keep the basement around a low D for today. As you can tell, this book is actually written for bass tuba. So uh, bass trombone is a very good range. Low trombone, low euphonium, high contrabass tuba. But it's, it's kind of a good range where we can have everybody looking off the same music. Oh. You 
can tell I need the practice. So <laughs> keep going. <laughs> Let's do that again for me. <laughs> and one more. Here we go. I keep on wanting to add more and more, but I, I'm going to resist that, and we're going to move over to <laughs> the next one, which is the same exercise, just starting on a different note. And just to be fair, very good job, Naomi. Let's move on to someone else. Um, Alex, want to help us through this one? Sure. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> I'm just debating whether I should have you go first because I'm probably gonna get my transposition wrong. This is an E flat tuba, and I, it's I'll, I'll, every time I look at bass clef, I keep on switching back into euphonium fingerings if I'm not careful. So I just need to do a focus exercise. So all right, let me go first because I need the practice, and then you can you can be the be, be the anchor that that helps everyone match pitch all the way through. <laughs> So as a, as a question, that feels like the exact same embouchure the whole time and you're playing a long tone, right? Yeah. Try to get that feeling on, and this is for everybody, try to have that feeling on every single one of these exercises, which is the point of the exercises. Also, when you're listening, listen to your vowel and just hear yourself singing the O vowel the whole time. Do. Every now and then you'll hear it. That's actually a lip change. Um, just, just be cognizant of that. All right, let's keep on going. Enough talking. I'm just using that to stall for time. Great. Oh, what am I doing? <laughs> 
So before we move on, let's all name these five notes because, you know, I was being a little little, little bit crazy on this one. What are they? A. 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 D sharp. A. D sharp. A. All right. Let's try that again. <laughs> one more time here. Very good. You can see how good these exercises are going to be to get everything centered. So we're going to move on to the next one. And one, two, skip a few. Well, let's do this one here at the bottom. Um, starting on the concert C. And who should I pick to torture this time? Let's pick Cody. How are you doing today? Let me unmute you. Are you there, Cody? Maybe not. I don't think it's unmuting. All right, well, keep on playing along, Cody. Let's move on to Dave. Yeah, let's move on to John. There we go. You ready to take us on this one, John? Yes. All right. C, B natural, C, D flat. Big breath, tons of air.
a little higher on the F sharp. All right, keep on going. <sighs> So again, the focus of this exercise is to make all of these just sound like long tones. Long tones where you're moving your slide. And you might be changing your air, but they need to feel like your lips are just vibrating the same speed the whole time. <sighs> And that's the goal. That's a that's a very good uh, first run of these, and you can find out real quickly. Um, the exercises where you just hold the same fingering and practice a bunch are good, um, but this one is really good too, where you, where you know you're moving your fingers around and you realize, oh, oh, this is pretty easy because you can hear the intervallic pattern, not necessarily the lip slur pattern. All right, very good, John. Very good, John. Dave, we're gonna have you next. And let's move on to a different, uh, different exercise. Oh, yeah, this one will be nice. Flow intervals number two. So, you there, Dave? Yeah. All right, so this one's going to start very low. And I might have to shrink this just to get the entire exercise in the... And I could get the whole exercise. So let's just uh, try to do this much. Sound good? Yeah, can you scroll it down maybe? Uh, or no? That's about as, about as far oh, as we... Okay. Yeah, that's about as far as I want to go to. Okay. So let's give it a read. And I think the best way to do this is just one line at a time. So if you want to go first... Um, we'll go, body da di, da di da di da di. You know what? Okay, every time there's a rest. It's a blur. I'm sorry. Oh. Oh, you can't yeah. see it. It's a blur for me. I'm sorry, Richard. It's a blur for everybody. Then let's try that. Is that better? I think it is. I can do that. Yep. I'm going to try to blow up as far as we can go. That's great. All right. Looks like I'm just going to have to get rid of my little video here. I'll stick it there in between the lines. <laughs> Whatever. All right. All right, we'll just do um, one measure at a, at a time here. So I guess I'll, I'll I'll go first. All right. I'll take it slow. Okay. You can take it slower, yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 
Excellent. And we'll just do one more of these for right now. There it is. Very good, very good. So, I want to just, uh, as a quick show of hands, I'm going to unmute everybody. How did everybody feel about that one? I, I, I just unmuted you all. Was that pretty good, or should we try that whole fun. thing again one more time? I did pretty well. Good. Okay. Yeah, no, no, that's really good. Just yeah, being able to... All right. Just getting the notes out are going to be really good. I think we should just do that ex exact exercise all the way over again and just try to make it a little bit better this time. Especially yes. when we work on these low notes, you're figuring out what every th all the ranges of your instrument needs to be when you're playing down here. So any mistake, if it's twice as hard to play these, these pedal notes with a really consistent tone, when you figure it out, that's the exact same thing you should be doing on the whole range. So this is really good work, especially for euphonium and tenor trombone, to get these really low notes barking, speaking really well, because it'll speak everything else on your instrument. All right, let me uh, go back and mute everybody. Open Dave up one more time. And uh, this time, Dave, I'll let you start. And I'll right. copy you. Whenever you're ready. Uh-oh, Dave, are you there? I don't think he's there. Oh, now you're there, right? Oh, okay. Let me try that again. My internet cut out. Huh, that's not good. I think his internet cut out. I'll just play now. Are you back, Dave? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Did you hear me on the other one? No, it cut out. Oh. Okay, here's the fourth one. Okay.
very good, eh? That was nice. And there's a bunch of these, as you can tell. <coughs> we're going back into these uh, flow intervals again. So we're going to actually skip skip ahead now, and we're going to move on to just r our regular intervals um, over here. So let me see. Cody, are you there? Do you want to help us with, with these? They're... It's a pretty easy exercise. Are you here? Yes, I'm here. All right. Can you uh, read these notes here pretty well? Yes, but I don't think I can play most of them. I think you can probably play the first line. As a matter of fact, as I'm looking at this, well, let's actually start with exercise number two. Okay? So... How about this? Just because this would be really good practice, why don't you name those notes first, and then I'll play them, and then you can play them. Sound good? What line? Line number two, right at the very top. Okay. So, what are those first two notes? I can't see the first one. Oh, is it, is it cutting off? Yes. I can see G, though. Well, this one's supposed to be a C and then a D flat. Can you read it? Which line? It should be the top line. The one oh, that top? says two. The one that says number two. I don't see that. Hmm. I wonder if it's cropping yours out. Can you see it better now? Yes. All right. So do you see where number two is? Oh, yeah, that is C. Yes. Yeah, that is C flat. C. So C and then? C and D. C and D f flat. Flat. Very good. I'm playing the wrong notes. Your turn. All right. How about this? Why don't we Why don't we just uh, move 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 on? We'll we'll play this, and I'll just uh, I'll let's all name it together and play it together. But I'll just put it on mute, so it's going to be kind of. Um, I, I want to skip ahead because I don't want to put you on the spot too much there, Cody. All right, so you keep on practicing uh, with us. That won't be a problem. Hey, Alex, since you're here next in, in, in my line, why don't we just go back and forth? You can go first. Sound good?
It's like an SAT question there. <laughs> What's the next note in the pattern? All right, very good. Um, so here's my question for you. Uh, as being as, as a musician, what do you think the benefit is to practice something that's seemingly this easy? What What is it that you're actually working on if it's not just being able to play the right notes? Uh, so for like me, it's to make it look and feel effortless. Okay, that's that's a very important thing. What's one way that you can be specific about that? Because generally somebody, well, no, I, you're, you're right. An audience member would say, man, you just make that sound so easy. That, 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 that's a term. But what are the specific things in the way that you make it sound that make it seem very easy? Um, I guess I would say airflow. Okay, that's kind of a big thing. That's uh, have Your airflow is going to be the thing that makes your sound sound in a certain way that an audience will say, oh, that sounds really effortless. So there's like a step in between. What is what is your control of the airflow going to accomplish? You're not giving me wrong answers. I'm kind of dancing around. Because the big thing is, is while you're practicing, if you're focusing on the, um, the steps, mm -hmm. then you're you're going to get away from the big picture. So, like, um, the big picture on this, what you're talking about, the airflow and the effortlessness is, in my opinion, is um, if you have the same tone on all of these notes, it's, it's easy, um, but it's actually kind of hard to do, but it sounds, it makes it sound like it should be the easiest thing in the world. So that's the thing that we're trying to make easy. All of these notes that we're playing, we're listening for two things. We're listening to the relationship of the pitch of these two notes. As we're going through these different finger combinations, some of those intervals might want to be a little bit wider. Some might want to be a little bit narrower. But we need to match the pitch between these two notes. Okay, That might not be the only reason to play this exercise. The second reason for this exercise is to match not just the pitch, but match the timbre and match the dynamics. So this is a matching exercise. Don't worry about the fingers. You could miss all of the fingers. I'm certainly missing all of the fingers. Um, I'd give you an excuse, but as the expression goes, an excuse is a lullaby to soothe the guilty conscience. So I won't give you an excuse. Um, although I do need to practice my E-flat transpositions here. So this is good for me. So that's what we're really working on, to match, match tone, match pitch, match consistency. Why? Because when we're doing all of these things, oh, and yeah, Match tone, pitch, and volume. When we're doing these things, then it seems effortless for an audience standpoint because we're just playing notes. It's uh, how I could do that. You know, <laughs> I'll just practice a little bit and I'd be able to do it. And you're like, yeah. <laughs> all right, enough. Let's move on. That was just a really simple exercise. Let's do number three as well. And then we'll move on to the next page. Sound good? Keep leading us through. Okay. <laughs> the volume on that one. Thank you. 
Alex, you did a really good job of matching your tone on that one, and your pitch was really good. Um, the best way to work on pitch is to listen to musicians that play with really good pitch. <laughs> you know, and then listen to yourself when you're playing, and it'll become obvious after a while. Um, yeah, it's obviously harder than that, but that's a really, really good step. So the more the more good music you listen to, and then the more you listen to your own pitch, the more it'll fix itself. All right, really good, really good. And this is a perfect exercise to work on um, improving that. So we're gonna go ahead and skip ahead. I'm not gonna do this one this week. We'll do this one next week. We'll do some of these others next week. And we're actually going to get started today on learning some bebop scales. All right, who here has ever practiced their bebop scales? I'm going to unmute y'all so we can have a little conversation on that one. Who here has ever practiced their bebop scale? I'm hitting the unmute heard. button. Never heard of the bebop. Okay. <laughs> so the bebop scale is a really important scale. Uh, if you ever remember playing or listening to, to bebop, the the bebop style of jazz um one of the 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 tenets of it is to basically see how many notes you can play that's a terrible way of phrasing it but it's it's really flashy and um you you want to be able to get around your instrument um and one of the best ways of being able to do that is that you want to actually have a scale with eight beats in it because if you have seven notes in a scale you always have to change the pattern but if you just want to have um a string of 16th notes you want to have eight beats in your 16th notes. So one way of doing that with the, with the, the bebop dominant scale is to... Is to <laughs> is to basically have a, uh, a major scale with the dominant seven inside of that. So um, it also acts as a, as a uh, dominant fifth moving into your next note so it's a very versatile scale and if you get really good at playing this really fast sometimes if you just know what note to start on you can just go ahead and read your your, your bebop scales oh. right on top of a solo uh, if you know what chord you're supposed to be in and it's 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 a real good way to get everything under your fingers so we're not going to do it really fast today but it's really simple it's do re mi fa so la Te ti do ti te la sol fa mi re do. If you have no idea what I just sang, listen to uh, the sound of music. All right, so we got a bunch of uh, talking going on in the background. Who wants to volunteer to to play their bebop major scales with me? Any volunteers first? Good music. Who who said that? That sounded like Naomi. Was that you, Naomi? I heard John first, but I also did say something, but I thought he said something too. All right. Well, how about this? Um, oh, I think we've got two bebop scales, so I will have... Let's have no. Naomi first, and I'll have John second. Sound I good? Oh, oh, so it sounded like John just volunteered. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Voluntold. All right, Naomi, we'll, 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 we'll have this one with you. If you play your I, major scales, this will be easy. I, my internet is being really bad right now. All right. Um, do the best you can. Uh, can you at least see the music? All right. So whatever you can do, uh, if you can just read the music, just play along. If you can't even hear us, just practice your skills. I mean, <laughs> along with that's kind of the point is not to uh, talk about what we're doing. It's just to do more. All right. So Naomi. You are on yeah. solo. So we're just going to go back and forth. Um, you've got a trigger on your trombone, right? Yeah. So let's practice these on the low range. Why? Because it's easier to do it in the second octave. So if we get a really good tone down here, um, it'll be easier to take it up. So let's see. All right. turn. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Very good. Now, while we're still on it, and you did such a good job, are you sure you've never played these before? <laughs> I, I lied. I have played them before. I just didn't realize. Like, you know, like, I play a bunch of dominant skills, and so it's basically kind of like that, but, you know. Well, I mean, a dominant scale, it kind of is a dominant scale. It's just, uh, yeah. it, it has two sevenths. That's the only trick with this. Yeah, that's the only thing. So it still feels familiar, though. Oh, yeah, and it's really, um, if you ever do any improv, practice your bebop scales, because it's the easiest way to get stuff working the fastest that in chromatic scales because if you completely get lost in a solo just play just start going up and down chromatic scales and just yeah. find a note to end on that's yeah, yeah. That's, that's a terrible way but i mean it's not terrible because it works okay anyway it works yeah <laughs> so let's do the same thing and we're going to read it uh maybe even twice as fast hopefully everybody at home is following along really really well so uh since you're doing so well we'll just keep on going with it so <laughs> Excellent, excellent. All right, that sounds great. All right, moving right along. Great job, Naomi. So what we're going to be working next is just our standard blues scales. And who do I want to have? Where It's been a while since we had Dave. Dave, you want to do your blues scales? Now I'll save the blues scales for, for, you know, I'll save you for something hard. <laughs> All right, Alex. Do you want to give us a, uh, do you want to lead us through on the blues scales? Let me uh, shrink this up to see if we can get to the B naturals. You can probably tell what I did here. I was thinking it would probably be um, more beneficial for everybody if we um, worked on our sharp scales because everybody practices their flat scales. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we can see all of this. We'll just go all the way down. So this book does something really interesting that I haven't really seen any other books do. Um, all the scales are written out in 18 keys. So... Um, it, it, it's written, as you can see, in both B natural and C flat, even though they're enharmonic equivalents. Um, they're, they're written out that way, and it's really good. And you noticed uh, on the other exercises in this book that there's a lot of enharmonic notes that you normally don't see, and people get scared of them. So um, that's one thing I really like about this book, that it's really... Uh, it, it, it presents you all of these double flats and double sharps in, in ways that aren't necessarily as scary as you'd see them in a piece of music. So when you do see them in a piece of music, you're familiar with them. So th that, that's another thing that this book does very intentionally. So the blue scale is a... It's interesting because there is no second note in the scale degree. Do, me, fa, fi, sol, te, do. So we have that, uh, the dominant seven. Te, do, te, sol. So there's no re and there's no la in the, in the scale. But do, me, fa, you have the extra leading tone, the fi. And that is a, um, uh, and, and, and that's the leading tone to lead into soul. So this is the blues scale. We'll play it really slow at first for everybody else at home. And then we can play it faster if you, if you want. But uh, it's a really good, really good scale to get under your fingers so you can actually hear applied harmony. Sometimes it's best to just, you know, 
theory, everybody thinks about the theory and the chords, but at the end, if you can kind of hear what the implications are of outlined chords, it's going to be a lot better for you than necessarily figuring out what the math is for it. So anyway, I'm done talking about that. <laughs> Some theory professor is going to come on here and yell at me on Facebook or something. All right, so here we go. Let's just do it again for fun, because once you get it in your ear, it'll be a lot easier. And this works better if you visualize yourself in a club on stage and you got a trap set and a bass behind you and you're just kind of playing playing a slow melody on top of it. You don't have to think of it exactly that way, but it's kind of good to picture yourself actually in the zone. And so I just realized why I stopped on E and I didn't move on to B natural, and that's because a trigger trombone, an F attachment trombone, actually doesn't really have a good B natural. <laughs> because when you're out in seventh position in trigger, that should be your low C. So I'm not going to uh, encourage people to practice playing out of tune on, 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 the, uh, on your tenor trombone. So that's really good, and I didn't even realize it is 11.57, and uh, we're done with this one. But though... Eh, you know what? I don't want to go over. How did that feel, Alex? Does it feel pretty good? Kind of hard to... to, to it's, it's good to get it in your ear, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's a lot more fun to play than just regular major scales, right? Yeah. All right. Well, everyone did really well uh, today. Um, from here on out, I think we're going to spend a lot more time on the scales part of this book and just use kind of those um, little intros uh, just to help warm us up before we get to scales and, and maybe do about half an hour worth of scales because there's, again, there's like 68 different scale patterns in this book and and these are the easy ones and it gets very hard very quick. So I just wanted to say thank you for everyone to uh, who, who came and joined us today. I think it was, it was really good for me. I am sorry for all of the, the wrong notes I was playing, uh, switching instruments in my mind, but if you don't do it, you don't get better at it. So <laughs> and And high pressure situations help you remember things better so all right thank you everyone have a really good wednesday i'll see you all tomorrow morning bright and early and uh yeah keep up practicing if you have any questions any questions comments want to change anything if you don't like what we're doing send me an email and, and, I'll, and I'll mix it up 
too. So, all right. Talk to you all later.